Yeah. I decided, well, we decided. We've been having this conversation for like damn near a year. Okay. She shot her first ever scene with, us, with another man. Oh. oh. That's a fucking L. Once my kid gets to the age where she understands, or maybe she could like get it in steps like, oh, mom, mom is a model. Mom's doing a photo shoot today. Like people, oh, mom makes money because people like the photos of mom. Mom's getting BBC'd. I'm fully aware that Adam 22 being cucked isn't news or surprising to anyone at this point, given that it's all the guy can seem to talk about now. I mean, his entire personality is just terrible. Constantly humiliating and embarrassing himself for public spectacle, even handing effortless W's to Sneeko, you know, the biggest cuck online. Well, I guess not anymore. And of course, when anyone asks what Adam's motivations could possibly be to embarrass himself on the regular this much, most people would give the supposed big brain answer that it's to promote his wife's OnlyFans so that they walk away from this humiliation ritual with millions in the bank. Gotta chase that bag, you know? All right, how I really feel is that I need my girl to go out and shoot a motherfucking porno solo scene so she can bring that bag back home. This is a business, nigga. Mm -hmm. it, this to, is business. To me Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you guys today that while that may be part of the reason, it doesn't fully make sense to me given that Adam went from completely avoiding the public spotlight for three months to now seemingly reveling in it, even at the expense of his manhood. Folks, I'm afraid the real motivating factor is actually far more sinister, and while what I'm saying is just a theory, I think it's decently backed up. Just hear me out, alright? We first have to ask the question, why has Adam22 been gone from this community for most of the year? Oh, and hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying. On March 15th, what started as a regular interview quickly turned into a major nightmare for the host when his guest, a member of a vigilante pedophile hunting group called the Perv Busters, was thrown off the show for questioning Adam about his alleged grooming of a 16-year-old girl. We, we talking about the whole lust situation and everything, but I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address the situation that happened with you. There is no situation on me. The one where you was messing with the 16-year-old girl? What do you think happened? The article says I'm going on. 19 when I met her. She was 19 when you met her? Yeah. The you... article says it. So, but what did you say? I said that I spoke to her on the phone when she was 16 before I realized that she was. All right, she well, was that's, how we, that's yeah. how we catch a lot that's, of us. That's how we she catch him. Canadian. She didn't even know that she was doing something fucked up. But it don't even matter, but that's how that's we cool catch him. You... Right? You gotta go. Hey, man. You know? Yeah. Let's go. Look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Season six, nigga. <laughs> Get my, I'll keep the cut. All right. He kicking us out. Why are you kicking us out, bro? Because I don't appreciate you guys coming on my platform and spreading lies like that. It's not lies. It's, research, it's not lies. It's something that you admitted, though. The story, as written in a now-deleted blog post by Adam himself, describes Adam engaging in two sexual conversations with the 16-year-old girl before ghosting her and then reconnecting three years later and having sex when she was 19 and he was 26. Her and I talked in MySpace for a while, and she was unsurprisingly flirty. I doubt at the time I was on the level of coolness of the band dude she was hooking up with, but she apparently had the foresight to realize how cool I would inevitably end up being, wink wink. One night in particular, we ended up talking on the phone and she went into vivid detail about how she wanted to go to Canada to see her and have sex with her. I won't even bother telling you all the things she described wanting me to do to her because at the end of the story, I'll have actually done them all to her and worse. The conversation left me hot and bothered to say the least. Now, any of the math inclined out there are probably reading this and thinking something like, so she's 19 now, you were 23 then, how old was she then? Well, she was 16, but come on, man, look at her. She's 18 or 19 in most of the pics here, but she didn't look much different at all then. If statutory rape is wrong, I don't want to be right. Uh. Now, I could make the argument that the age of consent is 16 in Canada, although I'm sure that traveling from America to Canada to have sex with a minor is still illegal as hell. But really, fuck an argument. She was stupid hot. And I wanted in. <laughs> he wanted in that 16 year old dude. What the hell's going on here? Adam admits that he regretted not having sex with her when she was 16, however, even saying in his own writing, I didn't cheat on her, Katie, his current girlfriend at the time, once with the 16 year old girl. 
I don't know what the hell I was thinking. He just flat out is saying in writing that he regrets not fucking a kid. Holy shit. Adam then claims that they reconnected on Facebook because the algorithm simply recommended her to him by complete coincidence, but that just sounds like a total excuse to me. Either way, when he was confronted on his own show this year by the Purr Buster, Adam's only cope response was to say that he had sex with a girl when she was 19 and that he had waited for her to hit the appropriate age before engaging sexually. Hmm, where does this sound familiar? Holy shit. Did you talk to her when you were 16? for like five minutes when I was 21. I'm 39. You wasn't 23? So now he claims they only talked for five minutes, even though he says in the article that they had a long conversation that went into vivid detail about everything. He also says he was 21, when in the article, he says that he was 23. I was, I, I might've been 21, right? So how you don't know? How, how you don't yeah, know if you were 21? It was 20 years ago. It, it, it still happened though, but we can't take that jacket off. Wait, right? We can't take that jacket off of nobody. Fair, right? You gotta go. Hey, man. You know? Yeah, let's go. Look, yeah. Damn, come on, man. You think I didn't do my research, bro? You think I don't got she the article? It, bro, I got, I got the fake narrative. I got the article and all that, bro. Like, bro, come on, man. Read it. I read it. You'll read it. Bro, you was 23, she was 16. You was on the phone with her for what? You should have known. Why am I talking to a 16 year old girl? Why am I talking to a 16 year old girl? Stop it, bro. We gotta get let out. You talk. You on the phone with a 16 year old girl, bro? What are you talking about? Damn, pedophile, nigga, this shit crazy, bro. Stop it. Stop it. Adam, that's the textbook definition of grooming. Rapper Joe Budden questioned Adam about the situation after the Purr Busters incident, and boy, did Adam just sound terrible here. That young number one, but. They don't know shit about shit. They don't even know when they're putting somebody in danger, according to you. You said the girl was from wherever she was from, so she didn't know what she was doing, but you knew what you were doing. You said, right. I knew what I was doing, so I got away from her. Well, right. you, you didn't get away from her if, by the grace of God, she ends up back in your life while she's now of age. You're spending the night at her fucking mom's house. What type of white boy pervert shit are you? What are you talking? What, what is the pervert shit about dating somebody once they are legal and of age? I know what it sounds like, and I'm not saying this is what it is. Uh, so the girl, I, Joe, I didn't, I didn't say a word to her for three and a half years. That you know, it's like we just sort of ended up. You waited for the girl. Me. You waited for the girl, Adam. Huh? You waited for the girl. I didn't wait for anything. We just ended up uh, reconnecting later on. <laughs> How did you reconnect later on? Or the, the Facebook algorithm put the girl in your bed? Oh, no. You, no, didn't, know, you, didn't, wait, you, didn't, know, you didn't know at that point that you probably shouldn't fuck the girl that you were talking to while she was 16 years old? So because I met her when she was underage, I shouldn't yes. have yes. fucked her when I was yes. over it. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. That's what I'm saying to you. Uh, well, in retrospect, I wish I had taken that advice. It would have made everything a lot simpler, right? He basically concedes to Joe that, yeah, he shouldn't have had sex with her, but not because it was wrong or that it was grooming, but because it would have made things a lot simpler. You see, it was just a little optical failure. It was bad optics to, you know, have sex with the girl that you were talking to sexually when she was 16 and then happened to just randomly reconnect with her three years later. But, oh, she's legal now. All right. That's weird. The other problem with his response is that Adam ignores him having those sexual conversations in the first place with her while she was underage. I mean, come on, the dude's a complete freak based on that alone. On top of these allegations, Lil Pump, the rapper, came out of the woodwork to accuse Adam of flat out being a pedophile, claiming that when he was 16, him and Adam were fucking the same girls that were his age. Put me in the ring with Adam, I'm knocking his ass out clean too. I'm gonna beat up that pedophile. Okay. Cause folks is a pedophile. How you gonna fuck? I was underage, so how you gonna fuck the same girls that I was fucking when I was 16? Yes, way, yes, way. I ain't say shit, but just so y'all know. <laughs> now, look, obviously, Lil Pump could be lying and making this totally up. I mean, it's not like he's a very credible source anyway. He never drops any proof, and given how irrelevant his name has been for years, it's totally possible that he was just using Adam's demise to get some clout for the first time in years. That being said, though, 
Adam has stated multiple times in the past how close he and Lil Pump were, even claiming they were best friends, which does give what Lil Pump is saying some credibility. So who knows? Okay, these girls look young. <laughs> All right, whoa. They definitely look young. Chill out. Problematic. <laughs> Illegal. Even if they're like 13, House Phone will be like, are you 18? <laughs> oh, what the fuck, dude? That ass rides me like a roller coaster, yeah. bro. Yo, we gonna molest you. Hey, that clip has to be out of context. Yeah. Are you kidding me? This they <laughs> FaceTime a little ass kid. They said they're gonna molest him to his face. Yeah, these clips don't look so great either. I mean, I'm sure the last one is a joke, right? I mean, holy shit. Either way, when you factor everything against Adam together, the blog post, the perv busters instant, his conversation with Joe Budden, Lil Pump's allegations, and these clips, it doesn't look great to say the least. Adam gave no response to this train wreck, he simply left the internet, which for many was the final nail in the coffin as to whether he was guilty or not. Rather than responding to it after the humiliating verbal thrashing Joe Budden gave him, he chose to go for the silent strategy instead, abandoning the public No Jumper podcast and focusing primarily primarily on his porn show instead, and working behind the scenes while the remaining employees that haven't walked out on him carry the show. But of course, Adam's hiatus hasn't been the last we've heard of him now. In fact, today, his cuckish demise is all we seem to hear about. It's crazy how much the entire internet, you know, from Twitter gimmick accounts to YouTubers, Keemstar, you know, just everybody on Twitter and YouTube, even like people like Sneeko, Andrew Tate even bringing this guy up in his conversation with Tucker Carlson, like every single person on the planet is talking about Adam and how he's a big giant cuck for letting his wife shoot a porn scene with another man. Not just another man, by the way, Jason Love, the king of blacked.com. I mean, holy shit. And look, guys, obviously Adam being cucked is fucking hilarious. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a lot of laughing and mockery and, you know, joining in on the jokes because how could I not? I mean, it's just objectively funny. But when I set out to make this video, I wanted to make sure to explain to you guys why this guy is in the news as much as he is right now. Adam getting cucked and suggesting his wife perform a porn scene with another man isn't a money-making venture. They have money, lots of money. It was Adam making a massive public spectacle of himself, turning himself into the biggest cuck online, clogging up our social media feeds with the memes and the jokes of him being goofy and cringe so that we forgot about the deeper, darker, and more serious press he was getting just a few months ago. This is all strategic, and anytime I bring this theory up to anyone, all people say is, oh, Augie, that's crazy, with no elaboration. Why is that crazy? To me, it makes total sense, and it's not even like I'm proposing some big brain theory or I'm acting like I'm the smartest guy in the room for figuring this out. It just seems to me that this is the obvious answer. This is the obvious strategy. He's spamming this shit nonstop because it's better, obviously, to be a cuck than to be a giant pedophile. And sure, maybe the money is part of the reason, but I don't think it's the complete reason. Regardless, though, last night I went live and covered Adam's pathetic meltdown, his conversation with his wife and Jason Love on his podcast, and his failed attempt at owning Leafy. You know, the guy that everybody hates. Seriously, how fucking pathetic do you have to be to get all of Twitter, even gay and LGBT Twitter, to side with Leafy over you? That's crazy. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. This is actually my first scripted video, which is very different to my typical style. But let me know in the comments what you guys thought of it and if I should do more. Also, if you're a channel member, I'm going to be going live this Sunday for our members only show. I'm bringing those back, so it should be a lot of fun. Just be on the lookout in case you're a member. But yeah, guys, I'm serious. Let me know if this video was a hit or a miss. I want to start posting daily again, so I need to spice things up. I know my track record ain't the best, so I'll just let my work show for itself instead of just saying I'm going to do stuff and then and I don't end up doing it. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.